Guys, moving forward with um, our talk about monetary policy today and and a pretty simple concept with a little bit of some complicated ways that they do things. OK, so um, just as a quick reminder, this is kind of the free market, the free market response to fiscal policy, meaning fiscal policy. Um, the government tells us we do something right or we have to do something or that we don't get something like in the form of taxes or government spending um, or transfer payments in terms of. Uh, an example of a transfer payment is like welfare. Um, so um, that's like obviously the government taking away our freedom, okay, or giving us more freedom, right? Um, the Federal Reserve System, okay, is based around us borrowing money, okay, and always saying, hey, listen, we're going to set this interest rate at a certain point. And then you get to decide whether or not to borrow that money. So it's a little bit of a free market response to, you know, the the idea of fiscal policy, another kind of a check and balance of, of what our government tries to do. All right. So you can see on your screen just some some things that we're talking about. You're going to see the term central bank a lot more than you see Federal Reserve probably in questions. OK, the Federal Reserve is simply our central bank in the United States. OK, so different countries have different names for their central banks. But either way. All right. A quick little information about who it is. Basically, the people, these board of governors, people, they're appointed by the president, okay, and approved by Congress. Very similar to the Supreme Court, okay. They serve 14 year terms. They're in there for a while. This is the leader, the chairperson right now. His name is Jerome Powell. You might see him. It's not facts that you need to know for anything besides a Jeopardy question at this point. All right. But they are, you know, in place to, again, regulate banks. Um, you know, protect our money inside the banks and keep our confidence up in the banking system. And we've kind of talked about when, you know, if we didn't have confidence in the banking system, everybody took their money out, their people wouldn't be able to borrow money. That would slow our economy down greatly. All right. So they oversee some things. There's a structure. They make sure that the that different banks aren't breaking rules. OK, this is where you and I go to banks, right? Just like Chase Bank and First Source Bank and whatever. All right. Making sure that we don't break the rules. They've got some different districts that, you know, different cities are responsible for. Not important for what we're talking about. Um, and remember, what we're eventually doing is we're going to we're going to change the supply of money. OK, and looking at the money market graph. We're going to look at the money market graph with a vertical supply line. It's not any necessarily different than the loanable funds graph that we talked about earlier this week. OK, but we're going to draw with the vertical line. It's going to make some sense uh, moving forward today towards the end of our talk. All right. So we are on these notes right here. All righty. And we're going to fill out this chart here today. All right. So the first thing you're putting in is right here. The term that our banking system use, uses is referred to as fractional reserve banking. OK. And reserve is just another word for people's savings that are in a bank. OK. And the fractional part of it means that banks have to, no matter what, have some fraction of money. We'll also refer to it as a percentage of money of people's savings on hand at all times. And we'll work on Friday um, trying to define that a little bit clearer. But understand that no matter what, and it's 10 percent right now. OK, so if there's a hundred thousand dollars in a bank, all right, the bank is allowed to loan out ninety thousand dollars of that. They have to have at least ten thousand dollars on hand all the time, no matter what. OK, and we'll kind of talk about what that means and how and how they get um, regulated um, with that in mind. OK, so obviously that fraction, that percentage is going to limit how much money a bank is able to loan out. Right. Because we have these rules. And if we can change that reserve requirements, going to increase or decrease the supply of money. OK, and we'll talk about that as we as we move forward. OK, so the first one we're talking about is the changing reserve requirements, just so we're clear. You guys are right here. So I got your chart. I have the column filled out. You can see that the other columns right there. Sorry that it's sideways, um, but that's what you're filling out. OK, so the reserve requirement is that percentage that banks have to hold on to. All right. And again, if the Federal Reserve, the central bank is either going to try to do something that speeds the economy up. OK, expansionary policy, unemployment might be high. OK, or slow things down inflation might be high if we're going to try to slow things down. So over here is your answer of how they do it. 
Okay, so if we want banks to loan more money, which at the end of the day puts people's money in, puts more money in people's pockets, we're going to lower that, lower that percentage. Okay, so we might change that percentage from 10% to 5%, meaning that now the bank can loan out 95% of the money. Okay, now here's what we've got to understand. If I'm a bank, the only way that I am able to earn money earn revenue, okay, is by selling money. That's my only asset, okay? It's the only way that I can make money. And so if I'm going to have that money available to get rid of it, if no one's buying it, so to speak, right, I've got to lower the interest rates, okay? So if we look at our contractionary graph, if we're going to lower the reserve requirement, we're going to increase how much money we have. Think of this being 90% here. Think of this being 95% here by, of the amount of money we can loan out. Okay. So anyway, that would lower interest rates. That's the concept that you've got to understand. I usually try to, um, I try to compare a bank's money in the account to, to bananas and the idea that you know, if I'm a grocery store and no one's buying my bananas, I've got to get rid of those things. And how do I get rid of the bananas that no one's buying? I lower the price. OK, money in a bank is is similar to that. OK, especially when we're experiencing inflation. If I'm holding that money and we have inflation, you know, like just like if you held on to your money, like if you saved, um, you know, one hundred dollars today and in 20 years you had that same one hundred dollar bill that $100 bill is not going to buy you as much stuff. Okay. So we want to be able to loan that money out, invest in people's loans, so to speak, and get that money back. Okay. Now this reserve requirement, this fraction is going to play a role the rest of the way in how these next two uh, techniques are used. Notice changing the reserve requirements, the least often used. I think it's been 20, 30 years since they've changed. It's been pretty well set at 10%. Okay. Next one moving forward, okay, is that we can, the Federal Reserve can also change what is referred to as the discount rate. Sometimes it's referred to as the prime rate, which this one is tricky to understand because you've got to understand what happens when a bank goes below their reserve requirement. So for example, let's say that, you know, a bank was in the spot where, you know, they were the $100,000, they could loan out 90000 but then they had somebody say, you know what? I found a better bank. I'm going to take my money out of the bank or I'm going to take my money out of the bank and buy a house. I don't know, whatever. And all of a sudden they have not enough savings in the safe. Okay. Well, if that occurs, all right, the bank, no matter what, okay, at the end of the day has to get back above that number. Okay. So in this case, that $10,000 number, dollar number or whatever. Okay. Well, the way that they do that is that they have to borrow money from another bank. So just like you and I, if they borrow money from another bank, they have to pay interest on that. All right. That's referred to as the discount rate and the prime rate. OK, so we can change that discount rate. So basically, this is going to be similar to a penalty that they have to pay. OK, the price that they have to pay. So, for example, all right, I kind of compare I kind of compare this discount rate to the speed limit right? We all have this threshold of when we drive, like how, how much over the speed limit can I drive and still not get pulled over? Like, for example, my number, like seven, eight miles an hour over, and this is like on the highway, not necessarily past east side, right? If you're speeding past east side elementary school, you're an idiot because the cops always sit there. But either way, right, we have our number and our number, whatever it is, right, is based on how expensive it is if you get a speeding ticket, which it's not life changing money, but I think it's about 150 bucks, right? So if I get that speeding ticket, I got to pay 150 bucks. Well, 150 bucks isn't going to make or break my life, but I can figure out a whole bunch of different ways to spend that $150. So I set my number at about eight miles an hour. Now, if the government said, hey, we really don't want you to speed, right? Well, what they would do is they would probably increase the fine. Right now, I think the government kind of wants you to speed right? It creates an income for the court system. It creates obviously income for, for whatever they need to, to buy. I think the government kind of wants you to speed right now, right? If they really didn't want you to speed, they would obviously raise the fine, pull more people over. Okay. And again, it would probably cause less people to speed. And again, if we set that price, that fine way too high, then eventually no one's going to do it. And now that takes away from their revenue. 
Okay, well, the Federal Reserve kind of is the same way. If they set this penalty, right, this interest rate that banks have to pay back, okay, if they if they go below the reserve requirement, okay, if they set it really high, meaning that they want to slow things down, so they raise this interest rate here, and they want to slow things down, well, now it creates the, the banking system a situation where they can't get close to that 10%, right? They're going to stay real close to the speed limit in our case. All right. Now, if we said, all right, we want the economy to speed up, we're going to say, hey, listen, this penalty kind of like non-existent. It's going to be like 0.25 percent. OK, and we're not going to really penalize you for it. So, for example, like if the government say, hey, listen, if you get caught speeding, it's going to be a five dollar fine. Like that's going to make people speed all over the place. Right. Five bucks isn't necessarily a big deal. I'd have to get caught a few times before it really hurt my obviously. Uh, you know, my pocket, right? My, my wallet. Okay. And so again, the government is trying to influence the bank's behavior by influencing how close they're willing to get to this penalty. Okay. So we lower the interest rate. We lower the penalty. We're speeding things up. We raise this interest rate. We, we slow things down. Okay. We raise the penalty. All right. So there's two out of three. <clears throat> now the last one, OK, the last one is the trickiest one to understand. And we've got to understand um, kind of what happens in, in these markets. OK, so I'm actually going to flip to a full screen here and I'm going to explain it, try to give you some type of a visual to to help you understand. You'll have to pause this and write this stuff down as we as we kind of move forward here. 